All right. Welcome, everybody. Hey, my name is uh, Sebastian uh, Maniak, and uh, I am going to be talking about how to manage your F5 Big IP using GitHub Actions with Terraform and also using uh, HashiCorp Vault to generate SSL certs. So first, let's kind of talk about this. Managing really F5 devices sometimes can be complex. Uh, there's issues with scalability of your configuration, and there's always this lack of version control, right? What config was run before, what were the changes made itself? And really when we take a step back and see the day in the life of an application developer, uh, we see really the process is that an app dev or individual creates a ticket, that ticket then gets submitted into some type of service now. Then the network administrator and the security operator or administrator have to communicate with the app team to understand what IP address is, what the FQDN is, grab the certs from some type of tool, uh, go buy the certs. Then they have to gather this information, create this VIP, uh, create the fully qualified domain name in some DNS, um, create the pool members, health monitors. It, it, and it's, it's a lengthy process that takes time and a lot of communication back and forth. Um, and what I'm kind of here to tell you about is how we can make this kind of process simpler. Um, and to make this simpler, we're going to be simplifying really the configuration using Terraform. So Terraform is an infrastructure as code where we can build code to apply changes to an F5 Big IP using AS3 inside of the F5. Then we'll be using that Vault PKI engine to automatically generate certs. Um, into the code. And then we're going to be using GitHub Actions and Terraform Cloud to provide this self-service deployment itself. So really at the end of it, um, what we want it to look like is when a developer deploys an application, instead of creating a ticket, maybe they can, but they create a new branch inside of the existing repo where that whole source code exists. And in that branch, they create a new file, a simple file that's, you know, a simple module, a couple lines of code that identify the name, the service, the IP addresses, the ports that it's going to run on. And then once they create that pull request inside of GitHub, maybe we want some type of team, a NetOps team to review it, make sure everything's correct. Once that's correct, we can push this branch of code to the main branch. And then this allows GitHub Actions and Terraform Cloud to initiate the changes to the environment and automatically deploy what was really illustrated inside of that Terraform code. Really, this gives us this opportunity to kind of increase in productivity, really reduce risk and really simplify and enable that scalability across our F5 environments, either on-prem or in the cloud itself. So really kind of let's jump in and, and, and see this in action. So if we take a look at what we want to do, what we want to do is we want to take this F5 VIP configuration and move it into this simple module deployment. So if we log into our F5, make this bigger. Oops, there we go. So in here, we have our GitHub repo um, where we're hosting the F5 Big IP configuration and we're hosting the virtual server configuration in here. Um, so for example, if we click on virtual servers, we see a set of virtual servers that have the name, an IP address, a set of pools, a health monitor, all configured applied to it. What we want to do is we want to create a new branch. We are the developer. We want to create a new deployment of this. So for this, I'm going to kind of quickly go into uh, dev dot uh, or GitHub dot dev. And this is kind of going to open up a, a web editor for me, which makes things really nice um, to demo, to be honest. <clears throat> And inside this editor, it's going to pull the configuration from the existing main branch. Perfect. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a new pull request because I want to make changes to this environment. So I'm going to click on here. I'm going to create branch, create a new branch. Adding, um, let's call it internal load balancer, balancer of it. Perfect. 
And I'm gonna switch this branch automatically. So as it's loading the branch, right? Here's my branch. So we hear under here, it says adding internal load balancing VIP. We see all pulled all the configurations from our main branch. And when we log back into, for example, <clears throat> our F5, we already see some of the services that are deployed here. So if I go to read all, I can see some of the web main front backend external services that are deployed. And that could be referenced inside this Terraform code where I have an external load balancer and I have another file that has two different web services in here, main backend and main configuration. So I wanna add in a new server. I'm gonna use this as a template, right? So I'm just gonna copy in this to make it easier. And I'm going to build an internal load balancer .tf for Terraform. I'm going to paste this config. I'm going to change the name of the module. So I'm using a module that's hosted inside of Terraform repo. Um, internal load balancer. Um, and you can find this inside of Terraform registry on terraform.com. I'm going to call this tenant internal load balancer. And let's give it a fully qualified domain name of internal LB. Um, this service, I'm going to use... Um, HTTPS as an AS3 template. So I have AS3 templates defined in here that specify what parameters are gonna happen um, and, and what configuration I want. So for an example, I just want an internal uh, SSH configuration. I want it to work on port 443 and I wanna load balance to servers in the back end that are on port 80. And I wanna have an HTTP health monitor because the front end is gonna be HTTPS the back end is going to be port 80. And I'm going to have these two pool members. Let's add another pool member, 16100.3. These could also be fully qualified domain names, these pool members. This could also get information from a third party PAM if uh, the team uh, wants it to. So I'm just going to change the VIP address. Just, just like with a VIP, this could be a different VIP. This could, this data or this entry can be pulled in from another repository or another uh, deployment um, to connect to like a, a Blue Cat PAM or some type of IPAM tool. So I'm going to save the configuration and I'm going to commit this. So adding internal load balancer. I'm going to push and commit the changes. So now what's gonna happen is if I go back into um, github.com and I take a look at my repository, um, it shows me, hey, somebody's added a new branch and they wanna pull this request. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at and click on compare and pull. Um, we can write some notes. We're going to be um, adding a new load balancer to the F5 on-prem. In this case, we are setting some reviewers. So we have to have a team member. So in this instance, Sebi Corp student has to approve this request before we do anything to it. Um, so we're going to create the pull request in GitHub. And what's going to happen is we're going to see all really the whole conversation of this session happening here. The first thing we see a couple X's here. We see one, we need a reviewer. So at the same time, when I press this, we actually got an email from that user to be able to log into and approve this request. So let me uh, show you how that looks. I'm just going to sign in. So let's open up the new page here, a new screen share. And I'm going to sign in as this user itself. So this said be Corp user to review. Uh, when I click on that repository that we're playing with, I can go to my pull requests 
and I can see that, hey, there's a review. So you, as the user, we want you to review this changes in the environment. So I'm gonna click on add review. I'm gonna say, okay, you know, this is the code change. We're adding this module, internal load balancer. Uh, we're gonna validate this is correct. Um, once we're satisfied with it, we can request for comments. We can request for a change if it doesn't meet our requirements, or we can approve this, approve the change. Once we click on the submit button, we can see that that X is gone now, right? The branch has been approved itself. And, and if we flip back to our other screen, our original screen, uh, we can see that now we have the approval is happening. There's no unresolved conversation or conflicts and Terraform is actually going into the processes to validating the configuration. So if we click on details, GitHub Actions has kicked off a, a Terraform code or a workflow that's going to run Terraform init like I would do if I ran my own Terraform, would check the formatting of it, right? It's gonna do a Terraform plan. It's not gonna apply because we're just validating the changes in this environment. And then it's gonna do a post check and a post complete the job. So everything's been successful. So if we go back to this pull request, we get all our green check marks, we're good to go. Let's merge this branch into our main branch. So I'm gonna merge this branch. Maybe I have a, maybe I have a service now ticket or something I wanna import in here for documentation and I can confirm this. So now that I've confirmed the process, a couple of things I can do, I can delete this branch or leave it there. I'm just gonna delete it. And the same process happens, uh, GitHub Actions gets kicked off. But instead of validating that branch, we're now validating the same configuration inside of the main branch. So if we take a look at our actions, now we're deploying this to production. Um, we've done the Terraform setup. So we literally we're just spinning up a Terraform run provider here. We're doing Terraform init. We're checking the format again. We're running a Terraform plan, right? So if we log into our cloud, not Terraform, we'll see the same things are happening there. And what's happening in this configuration, if we kind of dive into it, so here's my internal load balancer. <clears throat> Um, I'm first thing I'm doing, I'm going to be logging into the vault PKI engine. So I have vault in here. I have a secrets engine called maniac.academy and I'm going to automatically when the code gets executed, go to vault, generate myself a new cert. And we'll see that on the F5. So I'm going to log into Terraform cloud because the entire state of my infrastructure sits in Terraform Cloud. So I can see every change, every um, configuration file inside of my environment. So let's jump into Terraform Cloud here. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go to my project. So I have a project called Home Lab Apps. <clears throat> and Shows the state shows on my chins. Uh, shows five based on the of changes. Actually, gives me the output of the configuration and tells me what was changed, what was removed. So I understand what was always done. This F five, and I can always roll back and go back to that change if I want to. So the way we have this in this environment, we actually have an on prem F five. This is my F five big IP deployed and I have a Terraform cloud agent running inside of a Docker that communicates to the cloud environment. So Terraform cloud and communicates to my infrastructure inside. So my vault and my F5 AIP itself. <clears throat> so if we go back to actions, this does take a couple minutes to proceed because we're doing a bunch of changes. We're validating everything. So the format was okay. It 
performed Terraform plan on the configuration. So it gave us all the information that uh, what is actually going to happen. And now it's doing the Terraform apply. So it's now applying the configurations to our big IP. And if we take a look at our Terraform cloud, we actually see the same, um, the same thing being mirrored. We see that there was something triggered via the CLI. Um, we see that it's in current running mode. So it's in planning mode, right? It's just going to go through this motion, the same thing there. It's going to plan. So do a Terraform plan using my on-prem agent. And also, if we have this running in the cloud, AWS, Azure, GCP, um, we can tie some type of cost estimate to it. So if we are running somewhere else, we can tie to the cost center and actually see how much money this F5 or this configuration, this deployment will cost us to run. Um, in this instance, because I'm running it on-prem, we're going to see a, a price of zero itself. So our plan is complete. Everything that all the changes that are going to be done in my F5. <clears throat> the next step is that it's going to provide the cost and then apply the changes itself. So the cost is zero because there's nothing, but it actually spits out all the different files and resources that it's going to build. So it's going to build uh, my app services, my AS3, my PKI certs for these applications. And once that's complete, the Terraform agent is actually going to click on the Terraform apply, which now it's going to apply the changes. So the first thing it's going to do, it's going to log into Vault and create a new certificate automatically. Then... Oops, then once it's logged into Vault, it's going to upload that certificate to my F5 Big IP. Once that F5 certificate is uploaded, the Terraform code is going to build all the profiles I needed for this application. So if we take a look at our GitHub repo and internal VIP, it's going to build a virtual server. It's going to build the pool members, the monitor, the load balancing method and the pools associated for this load balancing configuration. And then in this instance, we're using the HTTPS template. So it's also going to build some profiles for us itself. So it's going to build an SSL profile and a pool member profile with specific pool members in it. If we use a ST HTTPS profile, it actually goes in and builds kind of more persistence uh, and it builds a server side configuration to it itself. So let's jump into here as the configuration is still kind of rolling, deploying. And the key thing with using GitHub and Terraform Cloud is that we can have this validation. We can also even apply specific policies like we see here mocking Sentinel policies that we can specify hey, the name is supposed to be like capital or you know has to have this abbreviation to it. We can be very granular in this um, perspective on how we actually deploy this configuration. So we see it's built it, all right, perfect, complete. So it added six and made two changes to the environment and it finished. We can take a look at the state now of this environment. Now the entire state of this config is here. It can be downloaded. It can be searched for us, uh, analyzed in any way we want. And if we log into the F5 Big IP, the first thing we'll notice is that if we go to certificates and systems, And we'll just make this full page. We saw that it built that internal lb.maniac cert. So here's the certain key. And it also built the cert bundle for us, deployed that. So it, it created this information. We can click on the SSL profiles. And we see that it built our internal SSL profile in the internal LLB partition. And we go to virtual servers. And I'm just going to go to right to internal we see that our internal virtual server with the IP address is deployed. It's doing an HTTP redirect automatically. We have all the configurations that are required. Here's our SSL profile. Uh, we're using AutoMap. Here's the pool member applied. A default cookie um, can be deployed. So now the configuration is done. It's finished. Um, if we take a look at our main repo, we have no more pull requests. 
and everything that's in the main branch is what's actually the source of truth for our big IP itself. So with that, this was a quick demo on how to use GitHub Actions um, and really automate the uh, life cycle or management of your F5 using Terraform GitHub Actions with Vault. Um, if you have uh, any information or if you want to contact me, um, definitely just hit me up on uh, LinkedIn um, or on Twitter on SavvyCorp.com. Um, I'll provide my LinkedIn information in here. But uh, definitely feel free to um, subscribe. And here's my LinkedIn information. Um, subscribe to my YouTube page and uh, hopefully uh, you enjoy this content and leave any comments uh, below. Thank you.